Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Who took a cookie from the cookie jar? Cookie Monster. C is for cookie. That's good enough for me. I think you can guess who's in this book. Oh, also, you read the title. Also, thumbnail. Yeah. So, Little Golden Book. When we read Oscar's book a while back, I could have sworn I had this book. Turned out it was still at my parents'. So, A Little Golden Book, Sesame Street, Cookie Monster and the Cookie Tree, featuring Jim Henson's Muppets, by David Kaur, illustrated by Joe Matthew, M-A-T-H-I-E-U. Hmm. Sorry for mispronouncing your name. Also, I can already tell, this book's going to have some cute art. Mm-hmm. All right, now for some fun fine print on the first page. This educational book was created in cooperation with the Children's Television Workshop, producers of Sesame Street. Children do not have to watch the television show to benefit from this book. Workshop revenues from this product will be used to help support CTW educational products. A Sesame Street book, published by Western Publishing Co. Inc. in conjunction with Children's Television Workshop, 1977, Children's Television Workshop. Cookie Monster and Other Muppet Characters... 1971, 1972, 1973, 1977, Muppets, Inc. All rights reserved. Printed in the USA. Nice. Sesame Street and the Sesame Street sign are trademarks and service marks of Children's Television Workshop. Cookie Monster is a trademark of Muppets, Inc. No part of this book... <laughs> Does it say the classic? No part of this book may be broadcast, so on and so forth. No part of this book may be reproduced or copied in any form without written permission from the publisher. Golden, a little golden book, and golden press are trademarks of Western Publishing Company. I would like to reiterate that we operate under the rules of fair use. And we are transformative because we're adding our own stuff to it and making it a different product. Now, if we were just reading the book straight through, then we'd definitely be in the solid area of what that falls under. Yes. Copyright infringement but we are doing transformative, entertainment, and analytical. So, with that, shall we continue? One day, it was a Tuesday, but that doesn't matter. Then why did you tell us? A witch, who wasn't a very clever witch, and that does matter, was out in the forest visiting her cookie tree. Hi, tree. Oh, it's you again. The witch was very fond of her cookie tree. She was also very selfish. Oh, I'm the witch with the cookie tree, and all these cookies are just for me. And I'm guessing by the illustration on that particular page, because there's an illustration per page, and I shall go over both of them. But I'm going to start with the second page, because it's the most interesting to me, is the broom and her are hopping around the tree. You can tell by the action lines following her and the broom. Mm-hmm. And on the first page... It's kind of funny, because it looks like the tree has twisted a little bit to go, Oh, it's you again. He is so over her. <laughs> she visits him every day, and he doesn't like it at all. But, yes, very nice illustrations, very bright colors, very well-rendered characters. Definitely something that would actually appear in the show. And I'm pretty sure they could actually pull off the tree in the show itself. Mm-hmm. Even back then. She was just about to eat a cookie, when all of a sudden, she saw Trouble coming. Trouble being a big blue monster who happens to be a bit fuzzy. Uh-oh, the cookie monster! Told ya. Now, to you and me, the cookie monster might not seem like Trouble, but for someone who has a cookie tree, it's a different story. The witch decided she'd better cast a magic spell on the tree so that it wouldn't let the cookie monster have any cookies. By the light of the moon and Hoppy Toad's hair. Only give cookies to people who share. I don't know about this. Something always goes wrong with these spells. Yeah, especially when a selfish... A shelf... Shellfish witch. Shellfish witch. I'm gonna leave that blooper in. Especially when a selfish witch says something about sharing. I don't think she's gonna have any more cookies. Then the witch hid in the bushes to see if her spell would work. Ooh, listen to the birdies and look at the trees. Look at that tree! Oh, look at that tree. I like that tree. It has cookies on it. 
Cookie Monster could hardly believe his eyes. Cookie Tree? he wondered. He went very close for a better look. Looks like cookies, he said. He listened to one. Sounds like cookies, he said. He smelled one. Smells like cookies. He touched one. Feel like cookies. Then he tried to taste one. Yeah, I didn't describe that images, but there's this great image on this other page where Cookie Monster goes, Oh, listen to the birds and look at the trees. Oh, look at that tree. He's hopping up and down in joy, and he's looking at the wonderfully rendered tree. It has this good expression on it, like, oh god. You can see in the background the witch's nose and eyes and hat picking out of a bush. And let me go over to the image where he's describing listening, sniffing, and touching the cookies. Each one with a nice illustration of Cookie Monster. For the listening, he has that classic hands up to the ear, listening to the cookie. And then he has one where he's... Presumably his nose is sniffing a cookie and then he's kind of tentatively with a hand on the chin touching the cookie. The tree pulled all the cookies out of his reach. Hey, what you doing? <laughs> the tree told him, I am a magic cookie tree and I only give cookies to people who will share them. That's silly, said Cookie Monster. Me not share cookies. Give me cookie. <laughs> Uh. No, said the tree. That's the rule. You have to have someone to share with. Oh, all right, said Cookie Monster. Me go get someone to share cookie with. You wait here. Don't go away. <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. That's a magic tree. Presumably it could move because it pulled all the cookies out of its reach. Good point. It worked. He'll never find anyone to share cookies with him. No one will believe he really wants to share. You crazy old witch. Also, to describe the images and to give my opinion on them, once again, they are all well rendered. They probably paid a good money to this artist. I hope so. I really do hope they paid good money to this artist because they did a fabulous job. The textures, the ink work, and the emotions and expressions fit very well, especially with the fact that Cookie Monster's eyes are those kind of loose eyes where it's the movement that gives you where they're looking and they capture it for when Cookie Monster jumps, his eyes are kind of cross-eyed. And then he's just running off in the next page where they're talking about him going off to share. He's all running off in the background and the witch is finally peeking her head out of the bush. The Cookie Monster ran all the way back to Sesame Street where he saw his friend Harry Monster. Harry, he said. Old furry old pal, come with me to Cookie Tree. Hurry, me need someone to share with. But Harry didn't believe him. Share? You're the cookie monster. You never share cookies. I know better than to fall for one of your tricks. Bye bye Next, the cookie monster saw Big Bird. Oh, Big Bird, he said. You want some cookies? Me need someone to share them with. Big Bird didn't believe him either. What? Are you feeling all right, cookie monster? Cookie monster was getting discouraged. But, he said, me not give up. Wow, that's also an older version of Big Bird. He's not as streamlined or as fluffy in certain areas as he is today. Also, I think they added more feathers to him because I think they moved it down a little bit compared to this Big Bird. And just look at the expression on Cookie Monster's face. He's like, I so want those cookies, but no one wants cookies with Cookie Monster. Because nobody believes Cookie Monster. Meanwhile, back at the cookie tree, the witch was having problems of her own. When she tried to take a cookie, the tree said to her, Stop. You can't have one. You told me to give cookies only to people who will share them. But I didn't mean me, said the witch. You made the rule. I told you something always goes wrong with your spells. This is ridiculous. I saw that coming a mile away. Not that I didn't enjoy it. And what about Cookie Monster? Well, he was still trying to find someone to share the cookies with him. Ernie, please help me share some cookies. Old buddy, old Ernie, old pal. <laughs> if this is actually a thing on Sesame Street somewhere, I want to watch this episode because I can just hear Cookie Monster's voice. Ernie, please, old buddy, old pal. 
Me share cookies. Someone share cookies. Old buddy. Ernie. Old pal. What? You don't share cookies. You take everybody else's cookies. Now Cookie Monster was even more discouraged. He just wants some cookies. Oh, please, he said. Somebody believe me. <laughs> but no one did. Wonderful! That is one, one ridiculous story you have told me. Tell me another one and I will count it. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, a particular t-shirt pops into my head whenever the count pops up, mainly because... Vampires don't sparkle. Yes. <laughs> Yes, there's a text bubble of laughter. This is the silliest thing I've ever heard. The Cookie Monster sharing. Oh, Grover knows you are joking, Cookie Monster. That is very funny because you never share cookies. I hate cookies. Okay, let me just go over everyone who's here because the laughter was actually a separate person from the person who said this is the silliest thing. Bert is the one who's laughing. Right after the count. And then there's a little girl, I don't know her name. I don't remember. But it's a Muppet girl, just to clarify. And then there's Grover. Ah, Grover. Super Grover. Not Super Grover now, but that's what pops into my head. And poor Cookie Monster. He's just sitting on the sidewalk going, We just want those cookies. Cookies. And then there's Oscar. So, feeling sad and hungry, the Cookie Monster walked back through the forest to see if the cookie tree would change its mind. And what was the witch doing all this time? She was still trying to get a cookie. Come on, you pesky tree. I'm going to make you into pencils if you don't give me a cookie. You said to give cookies only to people who will share them. I suddenly see where this ending is going. There's also a very sad bunny there. Aw, that poor bunny. Mainly because who wouldn't be sad looking at a sad cookie monster? When the cookie monster heard the witch in the tree arguing, he knew who had caused all the trouble. Oh ho! You're the person who told the tree not to give cookies except to share? That dumb thing to do. You're not kidding! Now I can't get any cookies either! Cookie monster had an idea. Hey, you and me can share cookie, he told the witch. Say, she said, that's so crazy it just might work. So they tried it. Okay. Hand over cookie. You promise to share? We'll share already. Come on! I love the way you do the witch. Also, I love both of our okay attempts at doing Cookie Monster. Well, I kind of forgot I needed to do that until you started doing it. Okay, said the tree and lowered its branches. Cookie Monster took a cookie and broke it into two pieces, one for himself and one for the witch. And then they shared it. This piece for you. Thank you. I'm surprised no arguing. Your piece is bigger than mine. Yeah, it would probably magically disappear back onto the tree. Mm-hmm. Me want more. What do you think? Sure, why not? Oh, yeah. I almost forgot to describe the art. Also, I think I skipped it on the last page, too. I just got so caught up in her reading. So I'm going to turn back a page here and describe how silly Cookie Monster looks running up going, Oh! You! <laughs> and the witch is drawn, so like, yeah, I now know it's a stupid idea. And the tree just like, okay. And like I've said before, like, the artist does a really good job with expression here, not only in the face, but in the body. And the way they do the lines for Cookie Monster's fur is really nicely done because they did just plain outline inking, and then they took a blue pen and went back in there and just made some nice fur lines with that. So it accents the whole fur texture overall. And then we have the cookie monster breaking the cookie in half and doing this very kind of gentle bow and, you want this? <laughs> and her going, thank you. And once again, the texture is just on everything. The tree and the expressions are marvelous. The art in this book is so well done. Here, one for you, witchy, and one for me. Wait, this one not right. Me eat it. This one look okay, but me taste first. Hey, slow down. Take it easy. 
Hey, what about me? Come on! Yeah, and this is where it gets ridiculous. Because, hey, it's Cookie Monster. Yes, who has now jumped into the cookie tree. And there are several cookies that are missing bites of them. Also, the rabbit even looks perplexed. You know, he probably used to come here and get his cookie fix until these two start messing things up. Yep. That is one bear tree. Why didn't I raise radishes? Probably because you like cookies, woman. Uh, and there's one fat and happy cookie monster. And one very annoyed, very bare cookie tree. Well, gonna have to wait till next season. I wonder if they have any anti-cookie monster nets. I don't know. Also, when is cookie tree season? I would love to know. So I could avoid it, because I'd get way too fat. So, what did you think? That was fun. Yes, it was, especially once we started doing the voices. The art is just so fabulous in this book. Now, it just really has that Sesame Street Muppet feel. I mean, this could be a fully colored storyboard for an episode. Mm-hmm. It just has all the personalities, and because it's drawn, it allows them to do things they really couldn't do without too much hassle. Like, a lot of times, they show Muppets from the waist up for a reason. Especially Cookie Monster and a couple other Muppets. They actually are operated by more than one person. Yeah, so there were really some tricks that, with puppetry, is too difficult to do, especially at the time. Though, like I stated at the beginning, they could actually pull off the cookie tree itself pretty easily in this series. I'm thinking the spot at the end here would be a couple of cuts to get to the point where they have a larger version of the puppet for Cookie Monster, and then they have a bear version of the tree. Mm-hmm. And we'd probably just hear noises of Cookie Monster jumping into the tree, and then we'd have cookies and leaves flying towards their witch. Definitely a fun read. Yes. And I think I have one more Sesame Street book somewhere in my collection. I also think it's still back at my parents, but I remember one other Sesame Street book that focused on Grover. This was just very fun. I don't know, it might have almost been more fun now as an adult than it was as a kid. I think it is, especially since we've grown up with the characters and we know what they sound like so well in our heads that we can just have fun reading it in a fun voice. And you really should make a children's book fun for an adult to read because they don't have to read the book just once. They have to read it not once, not twice, but dozens of times and probably more. So it has to be fun for the parent to read. Exactly. And licensing a book that ties into a TV show, it's a way to get the kid to read a book because they already know the characters. I don't have a lot of licensed stuff in my collection. I did when I was younger, but what has survived growing up and moving and everything is not my whole childhood collection. So, But it's nice tieback. It feels very authentic to Sesame Street. You have the fun, you have the whimsy, you have the character archetypes. They brought in a lot of characters for a book that's Cookie Monster and the Cookie Tree. We got to see a lot of cameos because we had Harry Monster and we had Bert and Ernie and Big Bird and the Count and Grover and Oscar and I feel bad that I can't remember the girl's name. Yeah, I don't think we saw her much. So this has been Cookie Monster and the Cookie Tree by David Kaur, illustrated by Joe Mathieu, M-A-T-H-I-E-U. Look him up. His name will be spelled correctly in the title of this episode. Well, not in the title of the episode, the description. The title usually goes to the author. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, we do have another Sesame Street book up. We also have more Little Golden books and lots of other books overall. Feel like some pop culture with your reading room? Check out some of the content on the main channel. Want to track down a copy of this book and try reading it for yourself? Not that you aren't fully capable, but we were having lots of fun. You should have some fun too. Check below for an Amazon link. We'll get you one if we can find it. Just want to go shopping? You know, maybe see if you can find a cookie tree online. Check out the Ebates link. Sign up and get cash back for shopping at stores you're probably already patronizing. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.